Hi, this is a video about AusDatum Tool. AusDatum Tool allows you to convert coordinates from Australian datums to other Australian datums and also from New Zealand datums to other New Zealand datums. So up the top here we've got a selection of the input coordinates so that the datums can be AGD 66, 84 or GDA 94. So these are the three common Australian datums. There's also some support for ANG which is a datum used they used to be used on uh, military maps, inch per mile maps. For New Zealand, there's NZGD49, NZGD2000, and for global uses, there's also WGS84. So in the simplest case, in Australia, you may want to convert an old map coordinate from the, for example, AGD66 datum to the current GDA94 datum. So if you want to do that, you can type in the UTM coordinates in the eastern and northern um, fields here. Choose eastern and northern as the coordinate type, and then press the convert button. So this converts the eastern of 300,123 to 300,227.64, and the same with the northern. So generally the difference is about 200 metres in the northeasterly direction between these two dams. So, what you can also do is you can choose to convert, for example, degrees, minutes, seconds, uh, degrees, minutes, or decimal degrees from one datum to another. Up here is the zone. So, uh, Sydney, Australia is in zone 56. If you want to see what the other zones are, you can press this I button. This brings up a map which shows you uh, the zones across Australia. down the bottom here, just the Southern Hemisphere, Northern Hemisphere. Generally in Australia and New Zealand you'd want to be using the Southern Hemisphere. So for Australian users, it also there's also this button called Topo Map. What this allows you to do is for the currently entered coordinates, it automatically finds which uh, topographic maps, like physical paper maps, exist. Um, and it will allow you to choose one of those. For example, if I want to have a look at the 1 to 100,000 map of St Albans. It will bring up this page which shows me the extents of that map in latitude longitude and the eastern northern range and um, the current grid reference for my coordinates uh, on that map. Now if I press this button here, the map extents for that St Albans map will be shown on Google Earth. I should also mention there's this keep on top uh, checkbox here. What that does is keeps the dialog on top of everything else. It's just handy to do that when you're, when you're viewing multiple things. Okay, so here's the extents of the St Albans map. So, also, when you convert a coordinate, you've also got the option here. Um, so you can copy the converted coordinates to the clipboard, and then you can just paste them into Notepad or an email, whatever. Um, you've also got the option to show the coordinates on Google Earth. So say I've got this coordinates from an old map, and I've converted it to DGA94, and I want to show it on um, Google Earth, I can say, um, you know, for example, home. That will bring up Google Earth when you press the button, and it will show you the location of that GDA94 coordinate. Of course it converts it to WS84, coordinates to show it on Google Maps, because that's what Google Maps uses. And there's the locations of that particular coordinate, which is just some random coordinate I've entered. So what you can also do with this program is you can choose to convert a file. So say you've chosen you your input and output coordinate types. Say you want to convert from Easting Northing to, let's say we want to convert to decimal degrees in GDA94. So then we bring up the convert file dialog by pressing the convert file button. Now what we can do is we can choose an input file. This has to be a either space or text, um, space or comma delimited file. In this case I've got a simple little file um, which I'll just 
this command very simply. So I've got this simple little file that I've created previously, which just contains um, headings, easting, northing, altitude, and then the values that I want to convert. So there's my coordinates in AGD66. So then I want to I want to bring up the convert dialog. As you can see up the top here, it's got an abbreviated um, copy of what it's going to convert. So AGD66 easting northing to GA94 that long so 56, which is the input file. This shows me a preview of the first few lines of the file. Now it allows me to select the number of header lines. In this case, there's one header line. Um, the type of file, comma delimited or space delimited. And the easting or longitude field is in this case correct, so that's in field one, and the northing is in field two. And that's just the, the precision I want to convert. Now I press convert. And it creates test.out. And this um, just. So I'll open that up. And then you'll find that it's got the converted coordinates in the um, decimal degrees format that we selected. So that's how you do a file conversion. This um, button here is a zone tool. So if you want to, if you've got a, ladder, a longitude, for example, 140 degrees, and you want to see what zone it is, you just type it in and it shows you the zone. That's handy if you don't know what zone to put in at the top. It also shows you a few other things like the um, the range, the minimum and the maximum longitude and the central um, longitude for that zone. Also, we've got a convert units tool. So say I've got measurements from an old map, for example, in, in yards, for example. So I've got 30 yards. I want to know how many meters that is. It'll convert it to the correct units. So, or 30 feet to meters, then 9 meters. I think that's most things. Oh no, that's not, that's not all of it. So, this button here expands or shrinks the dialog. This button here is preferences. So, just briefly on the preferences, there's only a single preference here, which is to use the shift files when converting Australian datums. So, currently I've got that enabled. And on my um, in the folder where Ausdatum Tool is located, there's these two shift files, one for AGD84 and one for AGD66. So if the selected datum here is either AGD66 or 84, and my target is GDA94, it will use one of those shift files since I've got that preference tick. Now what that does is it creates a more accurate result um, than using purely formulas alone. It's actually using a shift table, which gives you a lot better accuracy. So as you can see, when I convert that, I've got um, 227.64 as, as the result for the easting there. If I turn that off and do that conversion again, I've lost the precision. So it's 228 now. So that's just, if you've got the shift files available, um, then you'd probably want to tick that generally. And I provide the um, shift files with the download. So. Um, now this button here expands the dialog. So we've got a few more things we can do with the dialog down the bottom. Um, this um, tool here, which is normally hidden, allows you to create a polyline. So for example, say I wanted to create some points. So I convert that coordinate from ADD66, GDA04, add that to my polyline. And then I type in another coordinate. Add that to my polyline. One more. And add that to my polyline. Then I've got the option of saving the polyline as KML file or just opening it in Google Earth. So I choose to open it in Google Earth. It saves it as a KML file and then opens it in Google Earth. Now what this lets you do is create a, um, rather than just creating a point feature in Google Earth, it will actually create a um, a line because it has coordinates. So there we go, there's those three coordinates that I've entered. 
So, for example, if you want to create a rectangle or some other shape using coordinates to bound an area, then you can use that tool. There. But normally, um, if you don't need it, uh, if you don't need to use that option, you can use this contract option just to, and so the dialog takes less space on the screen. Okay, well, that's about all. Um, I won't go into the details, um, for example, of ANG or, or the NZ datums. Um, I'll just briefly show the ANG datum. There's, um, you have to enter some shift parameters um, because ANG, which is, if you remember, it's the old inch to the miles map and the military maps. Um, there's no exact mapping, no formula that you can use to convert from that datum coordinates um, in that datum to the current datums. So what you actually have to do is you actually have to paper map. You have to find some matching points on the old map and the new map and then use this button here, you can actually um, enter three test points that are on the new GDA map and the old ANG map, um, the latitude longitudes of the same feature on those two different maps. And what this will do is when you enter these three and press OK, it will actually compute the shift parameters here. Um, you can also, if you've got the shift parameters already, you can also enter those manually. Uh, there's a few examples on my, on my website www.binaryarts.net um, of those shift parameters for the areas around Sydney. Um, so anyway, so that's there's another thing that you can do which I should also mention. So if you're going from GDA coordinates to WGS84, you see this new button pop up here, Epoch. Now what this is, is a time dependent datum conversion. So to put it briefly, WGS84 is a global datum, whereas GDA94 is a continental datum. And since the continent of Australia is shifting um, ever so slightly each year, um, so it's the order of a few centimetres um, a year, um, since it's shifting relative to the, the um, reference framework of the WGS84 datum, um, it's time dependent. So if you want really accurate coordinate conversions, from GDA94 to WGS84, you have to actually either use the current date or enter an epoch, enter a year and the day since January, um, so that it will perform a reasonably precise conversion based on that continental drift model. Um, so that's one of the more, um, I guess, complicated things um, to do with datums, the time dependent factor. Um, you can read more about that on my, my website, binaryearth.net. Um, but anyway, just letting you know it's in the tool. This tool is quite comprehensive in what it can do. And I haven't even gone to the New Zealand um, datum transfer, datum coordinate conversions yet. Um, but maybe I should just give an example. So, think, um, enter a end of GDA 94 that long, convert it to in the GD2000, and you can see the um, I've entered the latitude longitude. There's a there's a bit of a shift in the latitude longitude there between the two datums. Okay, so that's probably do us for now. Um, thanks for watching. I hope you find the tool useful.